Hey, hey, sweeties. It's Friendly here of the Crystal. If you've seen our last video, that was done by Tosha. Today I am going to be playing some Hustle Cat. I am a sector from Hustle Cat. There I am right there. And so I thought that it would be proper for me to play this game. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing new game. Even though I've completed it, we're going to be doing new game so that you guys can see like all the new stuff. We don't want to continue from a place you haven't seen. So this is episode one and we're going to begin. And here we are playing as Avery Gray. Now, I use she, her, but Avery Gray can be they, them, which is very rare in a dating sim, especially like changing it mid-game. So we're going to start Avery off as they, them. We might change it mid-game if you ever want to like, if you ever want us to like change pronouns mid-game, just leave it in the comments below and we'll change pronouns mid-game. Select our photo. I'm going to go with the dark as Avery with long hair. Uh, you can see our address is pending. Our degree. Yeah, we have one. <laughs> yep, we have a degree. Wonderful. So we can, yeah. I'm not sure that, like, employers would accept that as our degree. But we do have one, so that's good at least. And our skills are rest management, sleeping, <laughs> nutrition consumption, eating, and meme curation. Obviously, meme curation is the best skill to have. Definitely. This is me. And here we are, we're getting right into it. So we're playing as Avery Gray. Um, as you can see, this is Hustle Cat. And I'm very excited to show you all how this game will be. I think I fell asleep on the couch again. Little lasers of sunlight are dropping right into my face from the middle of the curtains. I think they've been specifically aimed to burn out my eyes. Uh, that does not matter, uh, for this week. What is it? Like, noon? Gee, <laughs> this is very relatable. Very, very relatable, just lying on the couch. In terms of, like, is that a pizza box somewhere? There's lots of time to drink. Um, game console. Little, <laughs> yep, Avery, you disaster. Jeez. Not my fault. This couch pulls you in like you're drowning in bread dough. My spine pops in loud protest as I swim free from my bread dough kitchen trap. I'm gonna have to apologize to Aunt Wendy. I'm probably leaving a dent in the shape of my ass in the cushions. <laughs> I'll probably have to apologize for a couple things actually, like the big mess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know this looks bad, but it's almost not even my fault. I can't help the clutter is naturally drawn into my gravitational pull. <laughs> Honestly, it makes me a little more comfy, you know? Like I really live here instead of just like I'm couch surfing at my aunt. Or like I'm living in a furniture catalog. <laughs> Not that I'm ungrateful, Aunt Wendy is awesome to let me use her apartment while she's away. She helped pop mom and dad into letting me come all the way out to the city too. She's pretty cool. I hear rustling behind me like fingernails on cardboard. It makes me pause for a second, but I jump up as I realize what it is. Hey, Mochi, knock it off. Mochi, the living trash bag disguised as a cat, stares up indignantly from inside the pizza box. He's trying to scrape some dried up cheese from the bottom again. His little mushed up face is probably trying to stare me down, but it's kind of hard to tell where he's looking with those crossed eyes. Mochi! <laughs> His face. Like, I I love this cat already. In fact, I think if you turn his face upside down, it probably still looks like a face. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Like, tell me if that looks like a face upside down as well. I clap my hands a few times to break the stalemate, but he jumps at the sound and waddles back to the bedroom in defeat. I guess since I'm up too, I might as well get to whatever I'm going to do today. I shovel to the curtains and throw them open. My laptop is still sitting open on the coffee table. Oh, yeah, I'm job searching, I guess. That's what I was going to do. I plop back on the couch, already sinking back into the cushions and take a look. Jeez, there are so many tabs here. Which one did I leave Greg's list open in again? <laughs> Not that one. This one? Or this one? Maybe this one. Nah, that's just another cat video. I was up all night watching Jelly Donut, the cat who balances donuts on her head. Aww. I have no idea how you get a cat to do something like that. Hmm, I wonder. 
Yes, that's why Mochi and I aren't internet famous. I find the tab and start scrolling through the listings again. It's not like anything new has gone up since yesterday, I bet. Sidewalk cleaner intern, color credit only. Internet comment section, proofreader. Fundraider Street 18 intern, unpaid. Yeah, it's been like this all month. Can you really blame me for giving up and watching cat videos? I know this kind of thing is supposed to take time, but try telling that to mom, dad, or my savings. Any of those could send me back home at any time. And I really have to get this done before Aunt Wendy gets back. Just thinking about writing another cover letter is making my will to exist erode away. Very relatable. I'm gonna go take a walk. And off we are on our walk. Oh, look at the wonderful city. Like the skyscraper in the back there. I think that's a skyscraper or a broadcasting tower. It has a little television monitor on top, I think. That is. When I got here, I expected to be buried in noise from the city traffic and crowds, but it's actually pretty quiet. The apartment is on a side street, far from the main street bustle. From here, the noises of the city are just a distant hum. It's comforting, like the buzz of an old tube TV. I'd have to walk like 20 minutes to get the train from here, but I rarely ever leave the neighborhood, so it doesn't really matter. Still living in a small, still living a small town life in the city, I guess. Yep. Whatever. I get plenty of adventure in this neighborhood. I can just set out in any direction and find something new, even if I've never been that way before. I get lost a lot too, but that's half the fun, right? Or it's you not knowing how a map works or having Google Maps on your phone. <laughs> I turn a corner at the end of the block and head up a tiny side street I haven't tried yet. Neatly arranged trash cans line the side of the road. I think I'm behind some stores right now. I'm expecting a dead end, but the road suddenly curves to the right. It looks too narrow for cars, but the faded white lines marking the middle seem to claim some brave drivers could try their luck. I decide to follow the sharp bend in the road. After I pass a tall partition, I'm surprised by what I see. A cat's paw! There it is! A squat three-story building painted so ostentatiously bright it'd be impossible to miss sits in front of me. There's also an arcade, but it's closed. Oh no. A cat's paw. Is this a pet store or something? Maybe I can get a dumb toy for dumb mochi. As I walk closer to the front doors of the building, I don't see the aisles of pet food I expected from the broad stall windows. Instead, it looks like there are couches and tables in neatly arranged rows. Oh, so this is one of those pretentious restaurants with a pithy nonsense name, huh? I can feel my interest deflate and sink into my stomach. Just as I'm about to turn continue walking, I notice a sign in the window that declares now hiring, inquire within. I'm hardly dressed for a job in inquiry, but I might as well give it a shot, right? I look to my right as I walk up to the door and see a little orange and white cat lying belly up, sunning itself against the window. Doesn't seem terribly sanitary to have a cat in a restaurant, but whatever. I like cats. I like cats too. Bells tinkle delicately as I tug on the handle. The heavy door creaks open. This place is so classy it feels fake. It looks like a game board exploded in here. It does. You've got the little checker floor pattern. You've got all this stuff hanging up. You've got that up there. All these things. Gosh, I love it though. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Isn't that what the palace was like in Wonderland, like with the cars and stuff? Is a purple cat gonna start talking to me? I don't see any purple ones. <laughs> Though none of them are purple, boy there are a lot of cats. I think I can count at least eight right off the bat. They're all over the place, romping around the floor, sleeping on some of the built-in structures on the walls. I barely had time to take it all in when I hear a voice call out to me. Welcome, please sit wherever you'd like. I shuffle in place for a moment, at first unsure of where the voice came from. Then of whether I want to sit or if I want to keep this strictly business. Um, actually, I start as the source of the voice looms in a view. He appears suddenly from the second story landing and covers the length of the floor in a few long strides. And he is very cute. <laughs> you look confused. Is this your first time here? Would you like me to explain a bit about how the cafe works? I'll be happy to give you a tour. His eyes are gentle. He's one of the people who smiles with his entire body and is positively infectious. And here we have our first choice. We can either um, go have a tour or we can keep it strictly business. I think I'm going to keep it strictly business. 
Actually, I hear about the job. Oh! His pause is brief, but it worries me a little. Is it really that surprising that someone would come in and ask about a job? Did I do it wrong? Oh, great. We don't get a lot of responses. I think it's because Mr. Graves only puts a sign up in the window. He doesn't want to advertise anywhere. Good thing I came in then, huh? You're right. His smile is broad, but his eyes creep to the back of the cafe like he's looking for an escape. Okay, you can take a seat, and I'll go get the owner. He'll be able to tell you a little more about what he's looking for. You got it. Oh, and uh, what's your name? Avery. Avery, cool. I'm Landry. Nice to meet you. Okay, I'll be right back. He bounds up the stairs and disappears. I begin to sit at the little cafe table, but freeze halfway as I hear a faint exclamation of dismay. It's followed by thundering footsteps and by Landry's return. Avery, I'm so sorry. Wh what? I didn't offer you any coffee. Would you like some? <sighs> Don't scare me like that. Sure. You got it. He vanishes into the back again and reappears carefully balancing a stout white mug atop a black saucer in one hand and a tiny creamer in the other. Gently, he sets the mug and creamer before me. I forgot to ask how you take your coffee, so I brought you some milk. There's sugar on the table if you'd like it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, I'll check with Graves this time. I mean it. Landry bounds to the back room and is again out of sight. A Siamese cat timidly peers at him as he goes, then directly at me with wide-eyed, worry look. Oh, it's a baby! I want to protect this baby. Tiny baby! So cute! I give it an awkward smile and nod before I realize I'm treating a cat like a stranger in an elevator. <laughs> yeah. I dump most of the milk and three sugar packets into my coffee before I can get it to the consistency I like. What consistency do you like it, Avery? Cake? <laughs> I pour what should be a little splash of extra milk, but half the cream is worth spills in. It almost overflows. <gasps> this cat's looking at me like it's offended by what it just did. What, like a cat knows anything about coffee? When Landry returns, he's not alone. Hello there. <laughs> this is Graves, the owner of the cafe. Graves, this is Avery. Oh yeah. <laughs> he looks like he should own a bookstore that insists it sells tomes, not books. He does. Maybe he sells crystals that balance your chakras. Or maybe this is what the owners of cat cafes look like. I've never seen... Ah! His eyes, they're two different colors. Yes, heterochromia. Though usually you wouldn't have orange in heterochromia in a person. It's very anime of him. Deviantardo C. Like uh, another playthrough said, I believe. <laughs> His... I can't focus on both of them at the same time. Which one am I supposed to look at? My attention is sucked into his icy blue eye. Is he wearing a contact to complete his dark renaissance look? I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. Eh? He had the eye of a vulture. A pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Excuse me? Telltale heart, you're looking at my eye. Kids, didn't you read that in high school? Well, yeah, but... Here it is, heterochromia. It's more common in cats than humans. What a weirdo. I'm not sure I want to work for a guy like this. Well, I mean, I do. He's... Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. I might as well humor him a bit if the guy's gonna sign my paychecks. He can rattle off as many weird cat facts as he wants. Graves, would you mind telling Avery a bit about the place? I think it'd be good if you talk about what we do here. Graves look like the notion is causing him physical pain. I'm not too keen on this idea either, Chief. You didn't do that already? Don't you think it sounds better coming from the owner? You're going to be doing the interview anyway. 
Good point, Landry. This cafe would collapse into rubble without you around to keep me on track. <laughs> Alright, Avery. I didn't prepare a speech, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little surprised to hear that, but I guess there aren't any Poe stories that he can quote for this situation. <laughs> yeah. I like to take care of streets. I like coffee. I like good desserts. I like a beautiful room. I wanted a place where I could have all of those at once. That's how a cat's paw was born. The cats here are from the neighborhood. Usually they want to come here, so I don't have to convince them to come in. Forever home. Pithy. Hate that term. But the cats who want to be adopted are listed on the wall over there. I'm a good matchmaker for people and cats. I can tell who's a good fit for the cat's personality. If they meet my standards, they've got a new family member. It's good you help them find homes like that. Well, if I had the room, I'd just keep them all. <laughs> but, Graves, you can. You can hug every cat. Oh, oh, I, I guess. Well, get rid of those. <laughs> he totally means that, doesn't he? Cool, I gotta be interviewed by a cat hoarder. <laughs> I don't know, it's probably better that way, right? <laughs> Who knows? Follow me, we'll talk on the second floor. Before he finishes the sentence, he's already three steps upstairs to the balcony. So much for the introduction to the cafe, I guess. I shake my head a little and follow him. After all, I really need this job. We make our way up to the second floor on the balcony, which, except for us, is only occupied by those amazing looking cakes in the display case. I wonder if I can get a slice on my way out. Graves leans down over the balcony of the cafe. He raises his voice to the people below, or to the cats, I guess, since cats are the only thing I can see from here. Hayes, will you get us some coffee? Is that the chef? I haven't seen anyone here besides him and Landry. Oh, I already had a cup. Is that going to stop you from another? You can't have enough coffee, especially when Hayes is the one making it. I don't think I met Hayes. You may have. You might not know yet. That's ominous. Drace folds himself into the slender chair at the corner table. He pushes the opposite chair away with his foot, nudging it just enough to turn it towards me. Come on, sit down. Let's talk. You don't have to be so stiff. Interviews are boring. Make it interesting for the both of us. No pressure, huh? Graves sits with this sort of grim pomp, like he's sitting in a skull throne and Raven's going to land on his shoulder at any time. Maybe it's more like he's about to roll a die with a lot of sides. <laughs> I bet he's a nerd. I take the seat across from him. Just so you're aware, we aren't starting without coffee. Uh, okay. You can talk, of course. I meant the interview. Okay. Out of the corner of the, my eye, I notice a tiny slip of a blonde man standing at the balcony entrance. Ah! I jump a little. When did he get here? I didn't hear anybody come up the stairs at all. Is this guy a ghost? Grace looks like the type to hire ghosts. Yeah, spooky. He looks terrified by my shout. I think I scared him more than he scared me. Gingerly, he sets two mugs in front of Graves. Thank you, Hayes, but you should give Avery the other mug. He sounds like he's reminding a child to say thank you. Uh, of course. Hayes glares up at me. Our eyes meet for a millisecond before he suddenly finds something very important to focus on downstairs. He pushes the cup toward me without looking back up. Uh, thank you. Graves' ring clacks against the porcelain of the cup as he takes a drink. Perfect as always. I don't know what I did without your coffee. It's nothing special, really. He talks like it's the first time he's spoken today. Quiet and a little hoarse. If that's all, I'll go back to the cats. That's fine. He slips back down the stairs just as quietly as he had arrived. That kid would make a great ninja. I look down at the coffee and see a sleepy cat face staring up at me from the foam. I've only ever seen latte art on the internet before. Did Hayes really do this? I take a sip, and it's not bad if you like coffee, I guess, but it could really use some sugar. 
There are packets on the table, but I can't bring myself to ruin the foam cat. Now, if we can get this going, let's interview. I'll even start you off easy. What's your favorite breed of cat? Well, mine is Calico. Is there Calico here? There is no Calico here, so I'm just going to go with my cat. Do you know any other languages? How about ciphers? <laughs> I speak the language of death. Oh, this this is very sassy. I think I'm going to go with the sassy E. Yeah. What marine animal would you say best represents you? Dolphin, orca, shark, penguin, b butterfly. <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> okay, so this is a reference to free. So just, yeah, shove, shove their faces over like, yeah, just boop, 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 boop. What genre of music would you use to describe your worth at it? Children's sing-along. Everyone has to work together for children's sing-along. So I, yeah. Punk, I'm not that distressing. No, no. Children's sing-along. Because that has like a hard work vibe to it, I think. On a scale from 1 to 10, rate me as an interviewer. Okay, 10, you're probably sucking up too much. 1 is like insulting him, even though these are really weird questions. I'm going to go with 7.5. Draculas or teenage wolves? I'm sorry, Graves. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kidding with that last one. Interesting. Good. I like interesting people. He leans forward, appraising me with this terrible smirk on his face. He's like the cat who ate the canary. Maybe I don't want to be interesting by his standards, but it feels kind of flattering nonetheless. Uh, thank you. You start tomorrow. Wow, great, thank you. Don't run off yet, I have paperwork for you. Yeah, of course. Grace pushes away from the table, coffee cup in hand. He nabs my saucer, even though I'm not quite finished, and slinks down the stairs. He returns as he never left, trading the empty coffee cups for a small stack of papers and a pen. He places them in front of me. So, what will my job be? We'll see. D did he hire me with no position in mind? Is this how this guy usually works? I feel like I'm in a daze. Too much information and too much coffee. I take the papers and skim them, signing pretty much anywhere I see an X on the line. What's it all for and why is there so much? Probably taxes and stuff, I don't know. And who cares, I've got a job. I push the papers back toward Graves and he eagerly scoops them off the table. Perfect. We open at 11. Be here at 8. We'll have you help with the morning prep. My displeasure must be pretty apparent because his mouth cracks into another smirk. You can work a later shift after training. You won't have to deal with those cursed mornings for too long. Uh, okay, that's fine. Now go. I have a lot of work to do before tomorrow. You need to get to work on fixing that sleep schedule of your- Don't call me out, sir. Thank you. With your heterochromia and your hot face. Okay, okay. He seems lost in his own world now, poring over the paperwork I just filled out. I guess there's all sorts of tax stuff you have to deal with when hiring people. Why would he do it so casually? Well, whatever. Not my problem. I head down the stairs. Landry's back. He looks uncomfortable waiting at the foot of the balcony, but perks up when he sees me. So... I'll see you tomorrow, co-worker. <gasps> oh, oh, congratulations! You can meet everybody else tomorrow morning. We'll make sure they're all ready for a meeting when you get in. How many people work here? Well, there's me, Graves, of course. You met Hayes, Finley, <gasps> Mason, Reese. That's it. It shouldn't take too long to get to know them. Okay, great. I'll see you tomorrow then. Great. See you. Woohoo! I'm gonna live it up a little. I'm gonna paint this town red. I finally have a job! <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for watching episode one of Hustle Cat. We will be continuing next episode um, where we left off after this intro. Please subscribe to the Christum, leave your comments below, and leave a like. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I have been Finley of the Christum. Please watch Tosha's series as well of the Pokemon Leaf Green Nuzlocke. And be sure to uh, 
Enjoy what we do. Thank you.